you know, one of the joys of mobile photography is the simplicity. It's the fact it's you, your phone, shooting and sharing stuff. And most of the time, that's absolutely fine. Sometimes you need a little bit of help, whether it's a difficult subject or difficult lighting, and you want a little bit more control. That's when having a bit of kit can help. Now, I'm not talking about bags and bags full of accessories, just one or two little bits and bobs that'll help you get a bit more control over your shots. First thing to have a think about is support. Um, now, when you're taking photos, sometimes your worst enemy is yourself, and it's this thing called camera wobble. And if you're trying to take some shots that are super sharp, that aren't you know blurry or whatever, then holding your camera, even as even if you think you've got pretty steady hands, can be a little bit tough. And that's where little tripod mounts come in. So there are loads and loads of these. This one here is spring-loaded, so you just pop your smartphone in. Pretty much any smartphone will fit in one of these. And clip it down, like that. Now, that on its own isn't a great deal of use, so what you need is one of these. Again, loads of different little smartphone tripod mounts. This one just twists on, and there you go. And instantly, you've got something that gives you a lot more stability when you're holding your camera and we'll get rid of that little bit of softness when you're taking your shots. Now the good thing about this is that it's got legs and that means you can pop it down somewhere and that is super for getting a, a very nice selfie. Got a good little spot for the London Eye here. One little tip if you want to get even steadier shots is to use a timer. So this one here I'm going to set a timer for two seconds you might think that's useful for doing selfies and, and family shots and so on, but actually, even just the act of pressing the shutter button on the screen, that can be enough to introduce wobble into the shot. Giving myself just a few seconds after me pressing it, and then it releasing, means it's the best chance I'm gonna get of getting a steady shot of the London Eye over there. Pretty happy with that. So, a little tripod mount and a little tripod can be really, really useful. Let's see what else we've got. Now, this is a monopod. What this does, it's got these telescopic legs. Let's pop down like this. And it helps you, again, to have a nice steady mount for your camera. And it gives your arms a bit of a rest as well. So this monopod extends to different heights. You can even hold it out in front of you and use it a bit like a selfie stick. More on that in a moment. But when keeping a camera still is also really important is when it's dark, when there's not very much light to hit the sensor. And very often what smartphone cameras will do, as well as you know, larger cameras, they'll just extend the exposure time a little bit. And that's when wobble, even just a little bit, can really destroy a shot. Now, selfie sticks get a lot of stick. I'm gonna stand up for them because some of the best shots I've got of me and my family on on days out have been courtesy of a selfie stick, just like this one. So what this lets you do is, again, using this little smartphone tripod mount. It's telescopic, so it can extend. So you're supersizing the length of your arms. And pretty easily, you've got a good shot. And because it's further away from you, you can get a little bit more of the background in as well. And the final trick that this selfie stick has is it's got Bluetooth activation. And what that means is that it's a, it's a remote trigger. Just by tapping the camera button on top through the magic of wireless Bluetooth, it'll activate and take a shot on your phone. Another thing that can be handy, just to get a little bit more creative with your shots, are lenses. Now again, with larger cameras, DSLRs and compact cameras, you can buy a plethora of, of lenses to pop onto your camera to get long distance shots or macro shots and so on. Not quite so easy with a smartphone, you might think, but you'd be wrong. So, what I've got in here, this little bag of lenses. There are three lenses in here, and a little lens clip like this. Now, that means that this will fit with pretty much any phone that's out there, not 
not tied to a specific brand of phone. And all it does, if you see you've got the, the, the sensor and the lens on the back of your phone, all it does is clip over the outside and adds a new lens onto your phone. So let's take a look at that. I'm going to take a look at a fisheye lens first of all. I love a fisheye lens. This just screws on to the edge of the clip there. So look how small the London eye is in that frame there. And then when we take it off, look how big it is. That's what fisheye gives you. Let's take a look at another lens. A wide-angled lens can be really useful when you're indoors, particularly if you're a bit short on space. So, let's have a look at the London Eye again. There we are, filling the frame. Have a look at what's on the edge of the frame there. And when I put the wide angle on, we are, you see we get a little bit more on either side. Okay, so that is without. And that is with. And without. And with. The last lens in the kit is this. It's a macro lens. And what that lets you do is to take really close up pictures of subjects. So I'm going to use my jeans as an example here. Now, I don't know if you've noticed this or not, but when you're trying to take a close up of something, and as you can see, it's struggling to focus. And that's because there is this concept of a minimum focusing distance between the lens and your subject. That is where a macro lens comes in. So let's see the difference now. Straight away, look at that. You're seeing every single fiber in my jeans here. Let's take a picture of that. And the final thing I've got in my kit bag is one of these. Now, cameras love light, and on a bright day like this, you might think there's plenty of it, but there are still some times when it's really useful to have one of these, particularly when shadows come into play. So, like I say, there's a lot of light on that side of my face, but not so much on this side, and for some shots, that might be a bit of a problem. Now, this light is adjustable. I can turn it up, turn it down to suit. This here is quite dark, and it's a great place to show what a difference the light can make. So I've got this LED panel uh, and it's not even turned up full but just look at the difference it makes on my face. And in and out again. And you can turn it all the way up and it almost becomes a little bit too bright. So even you know in the middle of the day like like this in a dark corner just a little bit of light can make a real difference to your shot. On some of the smartphone tripod mounts that we saw earlier on, they give you a little shoe that you can mount the light on top of as well to make sure that your subject is, is fully illuminated. Um, now this works well obviously in the dark and that can also help to reduce camera wobble as well because it means that your smartphone camera can take a faster exposure and again it's, it's another way of getting a cleaner shot. But don't always put your light on top of your phone. Try from the different angles, try from the side, look at the shadows that can be created. Pop a bit of tissue or a bit of um, different coloured paper over the top of your light and get some different colour casts as well. Be creative and experiment and practice because that's the only way that you're going to improve.